Today, I want to talk about a company that rocketed to the top of the world and crashed back down just as hard. Now, GoPro wants to claw its way back to relevancy once again, but does this company have what it takes or is it too late for this amateur filming legend? Hey everybody and welcome back to Dollars and Cents, helping you make sense of making dollars. GoPro began like many other startups. During a surfing trip in 2002, founder Nick Woodman noticed a lack of high quality cameras that could withstand the stress of surfing. And so he set out to change that, and the first GoPro was launched as a crude 35mm film camera with a waterproof shell. The company would continue to evolve this idea until 2014, when GoPro released its first HD camera. And over the next two years, the company would soar to incredible highs, bringing in nearly $2 billion in 2015 alone, but then all of a sudden this success would be cut short. Towards the tail end of 2015, GoPro would see some big earnings misses, resulting in the stock price falling 80% over the next few years. This in turn saw the numerous workforce cuts gouging out the very heart of the company, and GoPro has never recovered. Now, with a new line of cameras, a social media focus, and yet another subscription service, GoPro looks to climb into the limelight once again. But before we get into the company itself, let's look at GoPro's financials to see what's powering the business. First, we look at revenue growth. In 2015, GoPro had brought in $1.62 billion, but that had fallen all the way to $891.9 million as of 2020. And though 2020 was an interesting year for many companies, GoPro has continued to struggle to generate meaningful revenue growth over the last few years. Second is shares outstanding. In 2015, GoPro had 134.6 million shares outstanding, and it increased that amount to 149 million as of 2020, with seemingly no plans to start buying back shares anytime soon. Third on our list is another disappointment, free cash flow growth. The company's FCF fell from $106.3 million in 2015 to $88.9 million in 2020. Now let's compare GoPro's last three year EBITDA average to their net debt. Despite having a net debt of just $184.7 million, its three year EBITDA average is negative 16.7 million dollars. That means GoPro still can't generate enough EBITDA to pay off the remaining debt despite it being such a small amount. As for an estimated market cap, well, we can't get that number either. The company's five-year average free cash flow is also negative, with an average loss of 41.9 million dollars. GoPro certainly has its struggles with profitability. There's also a lot to be desired in terms of return on invested capital. Given GoPro's persistent inability to make a profit, its five year average ROIC is negative 0.1%, though it's somewhat skewed by a 12-month ROIC of 31.1%. And finally, as for dividends, you can count GoPro out. It doesn't pay any. Not that it could afford to. And with that, I say, what a train wreck. Just from its financials, GoPro seems to be teetering on the edge of bankruptcy in just a few years. Its inability to generate a profit over the last eight years and overall lack of balance sheet strength, we have a company with no real redeeming characteristics, at least from a financial perspective. Yet, we've seen companies like this before, such as Bed Bath & Beyond. So, it's entirely possible that GoPro could turn around and reclaim its former glory. And GoPro has worked very hard to make that turn too, with many changes. Its first and largest change laid off 20% of its workforce at the start of 2020. And while I imagine that contributed a good deal to the bottom line, I personally find it detestable. What a move like this really tells me is that management lacks any ability to meaningfully guide the company through any real adversity. On top of that, this is not the first, nor the second, or even the third time GoPro's done this. It's the fifth time in five years. Along with this change, GoPro also managed to release a new iteration of its Hero camera line, the Hero 10, and a relaunch of its mobile app, Quick. The Hero 10 doesn't have many remarkable changes. The only real improvement to it was the refinement of its hypersmooth feature, a feature introduced four generations ago. Yet the biggest change in GoPro's arsenal is its revolutionary new subscription-based service, which is so revolutionary it doesn't even have a name. So I'll just call it GoPro Plus from here on out. While this service is relatively cheap at just $50 a year, it comes with quite a perk, and that is $100 off the new Hero 10 camera. 
Plus, the service comes with unlimited cloud storage, which I guess can be useful, and a no questions asked damage replacement for your camera. Outside of that though, the service doesn't really seem to include any compelling features. If subscribing to GoPro Plus doesn't suit you, there's also the option to download the mobile app Quick. Initially launched a few years ago, it sort of faded into obscurity, but it's been given new life as of last year. And while the app does cost $10 a year if you don't have GoPro Plus, the app syncs with the company's other products and offers a decent, lightweight video editing software for the on-the-fly editing. These features are certainly improvements over the old app. And no one can really blame GoPro for looking to further monetize Quick in GoPro Plus. Plenty of other companies have seen incredible numbers with the subscription-based services, such as Adobe and Microsoft Office. The question does arise on how GoPro plans to actually further monetize Quick in GoPro Plus, as it doesn't seem abundantly clear right now. Plus, GoPro set a goal to improve margins by driving 40% of its sales as direct to consumer. Right now, D to C stands at 35%. So, really not far to go. And all these changes seem to be working too. Looking at the last two years, GoPro's new strategy garnered a 168% year-over-year subscriber growth and a D2C growth of 16%. And this has resulted in overall higher margins. And most impressively, for the first time in a very long time, GoPro could finally boast about positive free cash flow. All of these things are mostly good. It shows GoPro is slowly improving its business with incremental changes and reintroductions of older ideas renewed and transformed, the company is trying to create a sort of self-contained product loop, offering everything a videographer or average Joe could want or need. You've got action-proof cameras, lightweight video editing tools in your hand, storage for your footage, and a great discount for a new camera, all in a seamless system. Despite all these good things, I think it's important to remember that numbers can be deceiving. And I think that might be the case with GoPro's subscription service. When you go to GoPro's website to buy the new Hero 10, you'll automatically get GoPro Pro Plus, forcing you to make an account. If you remove the service, the camera's price shoots up $100. To me, that's a shady way to get people into your subscription service, and I think by this time next year, GoPro will lose most of the subscribers who have signed up only for the camera discount. On top of this, I also believe that GoPro has little to no organic subscriber growth outside of camera purchases. Of course, I don't have any solid way of verifying this since the company doesn't publish its subscription sign-up numbers from camera sales. It's just my opinion so please take it with a grain of salt. But when I think about it, subscriber growth might not be the biggest hurdle facing the company. I think there's something a little bit bigger, and that is relentless mediocrity. Over the last few years, it seems like GoPro's products have been just okay. Nothing like the revolutionary innovative products of its earlier days. In most recent times, the biggest innovation has seemingly been an upgrade to a feature that was introduced four years ago. And this is borne out in the fact that every year for the last five years, GoPro has spent less and less money on research and development. And that's really unfortunate to me. GoPro has built such an incredible brand and really made a name for itself. I understand that the focus has always been on the cameras, but after nearly two decades operating, what else has the company to show for it? Four cameras, a host of accessories, and some backpacks? I don't think that's good enough. Honestly, to me, GoPro has seemingly developed one incredible product, got to the top of the hill, and settled there. The apparent complacency of the business has really gotten out of hand. And I wouldn't be surprised if another Another company swoops in with a better product and snatches much of GoPro's market share in a few years. But at the end of the day, GoPro is still a business that dominates its market and has better brand recognition than many other businesses. Despite this, I don't think that GoPro really has anything that makes the business special or unique outside of its legendary name. And I believe that the best case scenario for shareholders is that the business gets bought and integrated into a better product ecosystem like what happened to Fitbit a few years ago. So that leaves us with a question. Am I buying GoPro? If the answer isn't obvious throughout the video already, that's gonna be a hard no. I really like this company, and I think that GoPro has really revolutionized the way we film extreme sports and had some really cool, really unique uses over the years. However, as I said earlier, I don't think the business offers anything to separate itself from the competition. If you disagree, by all means, go out, do your own research, and invest. But for me, I'll stay as far away as possible until GoPro can demonstrate it's more than just a simple camera company. Well, that's all I've got for you in this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below or join my discord where we can talk more. Until next time, I'll see all of you in the next episode of Dollars and Cents.